Hi guys, welcome back. The iPod was Apple's revolutionary product very long time back and at first it was launched as a portable media player which then got updated over the course of time and now what we are left with is this guy which is the iPod Touch and to be precise the iPod Touch 7th generation. Well I bought one and it's just to check in 2020 which demographic of users is this product targeting. As I was saying, this is the iPod Touch 7th generation and actually it's the only iPod that Apple is officially selling. And in Apple India website, its starting price is 18,900 Indian rupees and it's for the 32 GB variant. Now that pricing is pretty high and for that price, you could get a very good Android phone or if you specifically want an iOS device, well for approximately 5,000 to 6,000 Indian rupees more, you can get an iPhone 7 during sale and that makes me wonder. Why is Apple still continuing to sell the iPod Touch? And also, who is this for? Well, what I feel is that maybe Apple is just keeping this product as an entry-level option for iOS device and probably Apple knows that majority of the people are not gonna get this. But still, this is a product that is very dear to Apple and it's one of the iconic products for them. And therefore, maybe just to keep that name alive, they're selling just one version of the iPod. But keeping all this stuff aside, whatever may be the reason, this product is still in market and therefore the iPod Touch 7th generation is good or bad is a big question. And actually to an extent it's a pretty good device. You get the unibody aluminium frame with chamfered edges with just one camera on the rear and it protrudes out a bit and there is also a single LED flash close to it. Now you also get a weird plastic section here which is for the wireless signals to pass through. Now I got this space grey color and the main reason I bought this specific color is because I like black front glass. And this is the only color option which has black front glass. And yes, in the front, you get the old classic home button which doesn't have touch ID and the display used here is just a 4 inch display. Now the main highlight of this device right now is that it's a very compact one. Just check how slim it is. And still, even though this slim, it's a pretty sturdy device and also the display used which is a LCD display, even though not the best, is a good one with not so bad viewing angles and sufficient sharpness. There are chunky bezels around the display but since the iPod is a very compact device with a small display, this is a perfect one-handed device. I could easily reach all the four corners without any issues. Well, the branding iPod basically means it's for music listening. And here with the iPod Touch, you get the headphone jack, which is a plus point, And you also get a wired headphone in the box. It is Apple's classic earpods without a microphone. But if you don't want to use wired headphones, well, Bluetooth is available, which for some reason is Bluetooth 4.1. And therefore, the range is not that good, which is a letdown. And also if in case you're wondering about the built-in speakers, well you get a small bottom firing speaker which is an average one. But still, the media consumption experience is not bad with the iPod because this is actually an iPhone without a SIM facility. So that's a striking thing and since it has all the capabilities of an iPhone, well the next thing to me was how well does it perform for day-to-day -day use. And here with the iPod Touch, well the processor used is Apple's A10 Fusion chip which is the processor used in iPhone 7 series. Now here there is a catch, which is this processor is actually an underclocked one compared to the one in the iPhone 7. But still here since it's a small display, the performance is pretty good and the user experience is not bad. Everything works well and you can actually do all the stuff you do with an iPhone like browsing social media or web, maybe use it for iMessage or even play some graphic intense games. All of this works without any issues, even though the loading time for some games are a bit on the higher side. And also, by the way, the RAM available is 2GB and therefore multitasking also works fine. Now since this device is very light, playing games was more fun if you can get through this small display. For me, games like Real Racing was a great experience, but games like PUBG felt a bit difficult. And that's the same case while watching videos. Well, we are all used to big displays and I did feel that the display was too small. And for the cameras, well, you get an 8 megapixel rear camera with f2.4 aperture and also a 1.2 megapixel front camera. Now the rear camera is like an added bonus if you want to capture some quick shots and you don't have any cameras with you and also the front camera even though not ideal for selfies can be used maybe for FaceTime or Skype if you're connected to internet. And that's the next big thing with the iPod. Now since it's an iPod there is no SIM support and if you want to do any stuff which requires internet well then you need to do that with the help of Wi-Fi. And actually now in 2020 streaming services are most dominating ones compared to old times where we used to download songs and videos and play it on the go. So all of this does give you an idea, which is this product, even though good in terms of design and hardware, the usability is very restricted. Screen is small and it's not an ideal device for video consumption and also for games. Then for the camera, they're very average and hence it's not a device you can use as your primary camera. 
And then for music listening, well here it's a pretty great option because of the compact form factor but if you rely a lot on streaming services like Apple Music or Spotify then don't forget to download the tracks you like because you'll need it if you don't have access to Wi-Fi or any type of hotspot. So from all of this, well, what I feel is that the name of the device stays strong. It's an iPod which does its job pretty well and that's music listening. And it's kind of like a device mainly for that purpose with added capabilities like watching videos, playing games and also some browsing which are all powered by a small battery which won't last very long if you play a lot of games or stream videos for an extended period of time. And these things can actually be done better with a phone and that's why the big question, who should buy this product? Well firstly, I would say majority shouldn't buy this because for this price, you can get a very good Android phone or with some extra money, even an iPhone. And also for people looking as a second phone kind of option, well again the price is high and maybe if it was selling for 10,000 or 12,000 Indian rupees, well then it would have been not a bad choice as a second device. And here the only ones who might need this or even get this is actually people who don't like phones or maybe just prefer a basic phone for phone calls and they want a music listening player. And also maybe kids are not at the age to use a phone, then for them, well this works as a media player and also as a gaming console now that we have Apple Gaming Service which is Apple Arcade. But for them, they also have portable gaming options like maybe the Nintendo Switch etc. And therefore all this makes the group for iPod Touch a very small one and hence I feel this might be the last iPod. It's so fascinating how things have changed with the introduction of the iPhone and other smartphones. The iPod was once a revolutionary product and now it's almost done with its time. And this makes me wonder in the next 10 years what's gonna change? Will phones be replaced? Well we can't predict anything now but we can all be updated together and for that it would be much appreciated if you could hit that subscribe button and also if you like this video hitting that like button will be really nice. See you soon in the next video. Till then bye.